Look at me. Look at me. I'm tough. Okay. So week seven, we did pipe saving. We did uh, multimeters, some basic electricity. Again, I'm trying to build some good set of skills for you, and skills that will carry us next semester into the actual wine and connection and troubleshooting. So we will do <coughs> pipe, layering, swaging, and soldering. Probably did, we did some soldering with uh, Bill. We'll do something similar, not the same, just similar, and it will give you also more practice. Uh, we work with copper. We did copper for refrigeration. Now we're doing copper for oil. Most oil lines are made out of copper. We'll talk about what kind of uh, pipes, types, and uh, how do we work with them, how do we do a pipeline. And uh, probably if you work with any oil burners, you need to know how to do some copper. And it's really fun, it's enjoyable. Uh, requires some patience because copper is very soft. I will talk about different types. So copper is used for HVAC application for tap water because copper is clean, it does not give you a lot of oxidation, and even the copper oxide is not toxic, so we use copper a lot for water lines, refrigerant lines, because they can be very thick, and they can stand a lot of uh, pressure, and again, they're very malleable, really easy to, to lay out. They have high resistance to corrosion, it does not corrode, when it oxides, when it's oxidized with, uh, with air, it, form a coating, a green coat, which will protect the material. So would you think the aluminum is uh, uh, highly exercised or low oxidized? Huh? Well, you think it's uh, aluminum is oxidized very fast. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. When it's the air, though. Really? It throws that little film on it real fast. Yes. It feels the film in. Yeah. Has to be the air. So it accelerates very fast, and it's so fast that you will have a layer of coat that will protect it. Same with the copper, it's not as hard as, uh, as aluminum. Uh, it has high resistance to corrosion. It's, there are two types, either soft or rigid. And copper by itself is very soft material, and to make it more rigid, we add some other material to it, usually <coughs> copper, or, uh, I mean nickel or uh, cobalt. And uh, what do you want to say? It will, it will come back. Uh, chemical symbol for copper is Cu. The name came from Cyprus, where they first had the first copper mine. It reacts with oxygen with, uh, from, and forms a sulfide that is green. That's why the Statue of Liberty is green. It's made out of copper, so completely green. Uh, we use around 17 million tons a year of copper, which is a lot of copper. Copper is 100% recyclable, so that's why it has really high value, and it maintains its weight, just like gold. It does not increase or decrease. Uh, and brass is copper with uh, zinc, so we have some material to improve the material, uh, the structure. Imagine having like, you know, all those uh, instruments like. Saxophone and flutes made out of them, copper, they're made out of brass. The brass is nickel, that's why it's shiny, it's more golden, and also you want it to be rigid. Copper is very soft, you can like bang it and you have a dent on it. So it's very soft. What do we call a uh, metal that is mixed of one or more material? Alloy. So when you go with alloy wheel, this is a mix between aluminum, iron, nickel, chrome, what have you. So that's an alloy. It's a mixer between one or two. Like a cheeseburger at McDonald's. Huh? Like a cheeseburger at McDonald's. Okay. It's got all kinds of nastiness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Copper tubing. So we talked about that now. Everybody done with this information? And again, uh, it is on Blackboard. So you can, you can print these things beforehand or you can go and check out those information on Blackboard. Ductility. What is ductility? Can somebody remind me? Isn't it like the toughness of it? Toughness, flexible. It's uh, not. What is the opposite of uh, ductile? Brittle. Brittle. Like glass or ceramics. So, this is soft, I'm sorry. Soft copper is very ductile, which means it can be annealed. 
three and three soft, so you can spread it. We can make a sheet. Uh, the most ductile material ever is gold. Uh, from, I think gold you can stretch it out to a very, very thin layer. You can stretch out one cubic centimeter of gold to one meter of cube. How thin it can be. You have to heat it and stretch it like dough. And it takes a lot, it can be very, very stretched to very, very thin layer. And these thin layers usually are very bad. I mean, they, they use for productivity. Some, uh, some of them also you can see through. It's so thin you can see through. So, uh, I also the pill to make it bendable. It's the best choice for HVAC refrigerant because again, if something is flexible, it can take pressure, it can expand without break. Rigid copper is best used for water lines. They are joined by sweat, roll grooves, compression, trim, or press connections. They are very fast press connections where you have a, a gasket and you press them together. And because copper is uh, soft, it can join together without leak under, under a certain amount of pressure. Uh, rigid copper cannot be bent, so you have to buy fit. So again, we sacrifice ductility, and we cannot bend it. That will make it uh, an issue to break, to crimp. So even with the soft cover, if you don't bend it correctly at the right angle and the right speed, you will crimp it and you will spin it bad as well. Uh, tubing types. So why do we need to find the right tubing type? Yeah? For two things, mainly. What is the first thing? We said uh, different application. We said pressure. So we want to know we have the right pressure, and we want to know if it's not going to leak. So pressure. Second thing, uh, is copper cheap? Expensive. So the thicker the pipe, the more expensive. So if you if you do not require to have thick pipes, and you buy thick pipes, you're gonna pay a lot for it. So the price will add up. So you have to know by you uh, which type should you use. So Kite has the thickest wall section. And uh, used for deep underground burials such as under sidewalks and streets with suitable corrosion protection coating or continuous polyethylene sleeve as required by the code. If you are going to bury grass, you have to cover it and cheat it. In the iron state, it's usually green color printed. That's the K-type. So K-type is the one that is buried. That's why it has to be thick, because it has to withstand some pressure. Thick makes it more expensive, right? Second type is L type. L is the th thinner, wide wall and decay. It's using residential and commercial water supply and pressure application. So pressure is key now. So L is less thick than K. It's used for water and residential uh, applications. And it's colored, it has blue color printing. So if I type, make sure before you go out and buy the copper, check the type. It's called. M type is even thinner pipe. It's used for residential and commercial water supply and pressure application, and it's also with color print. So we have K, L, M. K is the thickest, L is medium, M is thinner. Then we have B, W, B, which is the thinnest one ever, and these ones you don't want to use unless you have zero pressure, and uh, they're used for water lines, sewage, drains, channels because they hold no pressure whatsoever and they're very, very, very thin, you can bend it with your fingers, with your hands. It's very thin. Probably see yellow coming out of uh, either D, WB, and water drains. It's not trained for uh, application with any pressure. What is, uh, does water lines in the house has pressure? Yes, it has some good, significant pressure. And you can see it when looking at faucet full flush, it's very pressurized. So again, there's uh, three types. K type, very thick, thinner, very thin. So we usually use M type or L type for oil and make sure you check the application. Uh, remember when we did the galvanized steel pipes? What was the nominal diameter? What does nominal mean? Nominal. You put it in the board over here. Huh? Yeah. The inside. Huh? The inside. Okay. Like inside wall. But when we say the nominal 
Diameter, what does it mean? It's what it's known for. So the number is what it's known for. For, for steel, that was the outside. So you go with the outside, that's your nominal. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you, when you go to the warehouse and say, I want a quarter inch, it's gonna give you a quarter inch outside, over there. And copper is the other way around. The nominal is inside. So yeah. Here you see the nominal outside, but usually the nominal is the inside for, for copper. And that has to do with the filling. Uh, so, and that makes a difference when it comes to heat loss. So we want to know what is the nominal. So if you say three quarter of an inch, they give you three quarter of an inch, but it's the inside, not the outside. Okay? Uh, bending, they're easily bent by hand. There's too, so many tools that can bend and makes you, uh, makes all different shapes for you. But again, it's something you have to do slowly. Uh, if you notice, you gotta get the hand for it. If you don't, if you bend it in the wrong angle, it will crack it. And that, you have to scratch that with the pipe. So you have to be very careful to lay it. And also, when you <coughs> put this pipe down, you wanna make sure nothing, will, nobody will step on it, and it's very in a very secure place. Flaring tools. So this is the most common flaring tool kit. We have some of these. These are the manuals. They have some power ones but this is still very common and very expensive. And each one of those, will show you how to use each one of those tools. And again, it's all manual. So you're gonna have some strong hand for it. And uh, just patience. And if you do it right, it should not be a lot of work. Uh, this is a playing tool kit. Probably goes around like 70 to 150, depending on the durability and the quality of the metal. If you wanna splurge on something really, really good for quality, probably you can go up to $200. But you can get away with something like fifty dollars for the first tools. Uh, flare nuts. So, why do we use flare nuts? We try to join two pipes together without soldering for oil, and uh, flare nuts will, will provide us with something very flexible to connect and disconnect. And if you think about it, it is kind of a uh, pressure fitting. There's a liquid from the inside that seals into this edge. And this pressure will be enough to hold go, uh, oil in place. And we use flare nuts a lot for oil lines. And you will use that with the pump. So the pump can mix the oil line using flare nut. And you can put two pipes using a flare nut. That's when you want something that you can connect and disconnect. Other than that, you connect the entire pipe using solder. So sweating, that's what they mean by sweating is when you uh, it requires a lot of skill, and I'll show you some videos here. But uh, the idea is, you do not heat the solder; you heat the pipe, as you can see, and uh, we heat actually the joint, out the pipe. But you heat the joint because you want and you put a lot of flux in here. So flux has two purposes. Write this down. The purpose of flux is I'll write it down too. So those are two main purposes of the flux. So be generous with the flux when you put it between the joints. So it prevents the oxidation because you can see the color of the, the pipe changes as you heat. And when you do soldering, you want to heat not the pipe, the joint. You put a lot of uh, flux in the inside after you, you clean it. And when it's hot enough, you just touch it with the solder and it should draw itself inside. And you do not need that much. Usually they say, the size of the pipe is how much, how long solder you need. So if you have half an inch, half an inch is enough. Don't go overboard, it's because it will fall and drip, and it will look ugly. It will look like you don't really know what you're doing, it's dripping everywhere, so it does not look very professional. Go ahead, so go this is, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> so you want the side, you want it to be like very smooth. Of course you can scrape it afterwards, but it's better to get it done right the first time. 
What is the chemical cleaning agent? It's a flooring agent or purifying agent. So it's a, there's pots for each kind of application or uh, product. Pots may have uh, more than one function at a time. They're used for the extractive technology and metal joining. In high temperature metal joining, process like welding, raising, and soldering, the primary purpose of pots is to prevent oxidation of the base and filler material. So we don't want to oxidize because if we oxidize it, we have different material now, which not going, which is not going to connect properly. And also, it helps pull in the solder, which is very, very important. So clean both joints in the pipe and do a connection. Keep the joint at the pipe. This joint is the part that you want to keep. Use a wet towel at the bottom. Also, good after you do the solder, it's good to cool it off. And brass is. Uh, very conductive, you agree? It's highly conductive material, so don't do the mistake of touching the pipe while you're working on it. The heat will go through it very quickly. Uh, map, 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 map gas. Map gas, uh, temperature gets up to 5,300, and we have map gas here, so it's very, very hot. So be very careful. Butane goes up to only 550. Fahrenheit. Uh, that's the gas in the room. So you're glad it's like uh, 500 degrees, yeah. Is that just the name of the gas, the map on the Yeah, it's map and map. It's map. Yeah. Yeah. That's all based on map. So it's really close to all the gas that are like acetylene and one is acetylene and oxygen. Oh, yeah, that's very hot, too. But the uh, map is really good. Yeah. yeah. They don't sell uh, acetylene in, uh, in a torch. I have two videos, I'll show you now, <coughs> and uh, we have time. For safety, do not wear short sleeve next week. Have lab coats, uh, please wear long pants. That's something that you don't care if you wear. You gotta use gloves all the time. Let me kind of, I have special heat resistance, heat resistance uh, uh, gloves. Do not, uh, wear goggles, and uh, me and Damien will be at the vice. We do the soldering. I want to make sure what to do it correctly. So we'll take turns. Uh, one more thing. I have masks, like N95 masks. I know it's very annoying, but I want you to get used to it because if you're going to do one joint, it's okay. It's not going to be a bother. You can have a fan. But if you're going to do a job in a basement for a long, for like two or three hours, the flux when evaporates is very toxic to you. So if, even OSHA. Uh, do like a joint starting, which is very small, not as, much, not, as, not as much as this one. For one or three hours, you need to be in a very well ventilated place. So just to get the habit, I'm gonna have you wear the mask and the goggle and do the, the solid. Let me see if I can the videos. So I'm gonna show you the video and also hopefully we'll be able to
I'll fix the voice problem, put a figure in for next for the lab so you can do it, watch it for the lab and we will go and do it. Alright, um, we'll do the quiz right now. Mm -hmm. 